So you, you were all kind enough to send in some of the things you're thinking about for 2017. I, I've got a list here so long that uh, we won't be able to go through them all. There's no way. But so, we'll, so let's start with the biggest. Let's start at the top with the state. We have a new governor, um, Mr. Greitens, which everyone knows by now. He also has a Republican legislature with a, uh, a super majority. Right to work is already advancing through the, through the uh, state legislature, as I understand it. What do you see for the state of Missouri under this new governor? Well, you know, I think perhaps what a lot of people are waiting to see what happens is what actions are going to be taken. Um, some of his campaign promises, people are looking to see how he's going to deliver on them or whether he's going to scale back on them. I think one of the first decisions that he made before he even took office with respect to uh, the soccer stadium and funding for that, um, just his, his stance on that took a lot of people by surprise. Um, but I'm, I'm still cautiously optimistic in terms of, you know, let's see where we go with this. Um, perhaps uh, there's an opportunity regarding that for us to, to look at best practices nationwide, um, especially what's been done in Kansas City, to see what we can learn from them. Talking about the stadium itself. The stadium itself. We'll table the um, stadium for just a second because yes. I think mm -hmm. that could, that's a whole topic in and of itself. But, sure. but we have a, he, he has a legislature. We, don't, we no longer have the executive branch and the legislative branch at odds. This right. is a chance for them to, to govern. Mm -hmm. I, I actually think they may be at odds. And this is the interesting thing about a Governor Greitens. And, and Yemi talked about him taking us by surprise on the stadium. What interests me about two, 2017 as it relates to Governor Greitens is I don't think any of us really know what we're going to get. He's new to politics. He's new to the Missouri political scene. And while he ran as a Republican, he didn't used to be one. And he ran against the legislature. He ran talking about cleaning up the culture of Jefferson City against the very Republicans that he now serves with. And so I don't think we know exactly what we're going to get with Governor Greitens. I think we may have some situations like the soccer stadium where he surprises us. Here's another place that, that I'm working on a column about in, in, in which he surprises us. One of his first actions before he was even governor, the Capitol Police issued a, a, a news release that said security's changing at the Capitol. There's now metal detectors, and citizens, even if you have a concealed uh, carry permit, can no longer bring guns into the state capitol. This is a Republican governor in a state in which Republicans love their guns, in which he just changed the debate about guns in the capitol by an action without saying anything about guns. So I don't think we know exactly what we're going to get from Governor Greitens, and that's what interests me. Was that a message he was trying to send or just the fact that it's so it's, it's bizarre in this day and age that you can walk into the state capitol with no metal detectors? I'm, I'm not sure whether he was trying to send a message or whether he just made a decision that he thought was best for the safety of, of, of the citizens or of staff or whatever, and the message gets sent and now he'll have to deal with it. The interesting thing about being governor is stuff is coming at you every day and you have this big bully pulpit. And it's so different than campaigning. Everything you say, everything you do gets magnified. And so a lot of what we saw in the campaign of somebody running for governor becomes much more magnified and quite a bit more nuanced and different when all of a sudden you're the governor. I'm not convinced that other than on a couple of issues such as right to work where Governor Greitens and his fellow Republicans who run the legislature, they're going to get along on, on, on a couple of the big issues. I think on some of the issues there's going to be some conflict. Does he sound like a Republican to you? He does and he does not. And to Tony's point that we're going to be surprised, Parkway last night or Wednesday night met to discuss their priority positions legislatively and have decided you know, exactly how they're going to react to some of the laws and things they think are going to come out of the Capitol, funding for education, they're worried is going to be cut. A voucher system, Speaker of the House is in favor of it. They're worried about vouchers. And so I think they too don't know exactly what they, the governor is going to do and how to react to it, but they're planning ahead. Rock was right there with them. And so in community news, such as Western Mid Rivers News Magazine, sometimes what happens at the state Capitol has to take a while to trickle down to us. 
we're in the first week of the governor's tenure and we're already talking about him in the local papers at the community level. It's, a fa it's, it's happening faster than you might expect. Very fast. I, I heard th there were several Democrats saying that they could work with this governor. They, they were optimistic. Is that just something you say on Inauguration Day regardless of uh, what's going on or do you think there's some sort of, they're seeing something in him that they might be able to work with? You know, I would venture to say, you know, as uh, my colleagues here have all um, talked about, that it's, it's a wait and see attitude. And I think it's, it's just um, being open to the possibilities of what could happen. And right now, since um, you know, there hasn't been anything that, that's been implosive, um, why start a fight? And so I, I think the approach that most people are taking is, you know, wait and see, let's see what other decisions he makes, and that'll determine the course of action that we'll take. It seemed like, yeah, what, it seemed like he was trying to be inclusive in his inaugural speech. And I, in fact, I thought there were a couple of lines in there that he thought would get applause and kind of got crickets. He mentioned uh, Dred Scott and Langston Hughes and kind of looked up like he thought no, uh, and, and nothing. But it was, uh, it was an interesting well, speech. Well, the, the interesting thing about that is, so uh, the other night the Black Caucus had a Martin Luther King event in uh, Jefferson City, and Governor Greitens was there and gave a talk. And he was very welcomed. And it was something that was um, a contrast to Governor Nixon who's a Democrat, who didn't necessarily have a great relationship with the Democratic Black Caucus in the Missouri legislature. And so I saw on Twitter some of the lawmakers that I follow being very welcoming and either surprised or pleased or both that Governor Greitens was at their event and gave a talk and was, and was very welcomed by that group and felt very comfortable in that group. So again, we get back to the point where I don't know what we're going to get out of this governor. And, and I think a lot of people, Republican, Democrat, and, and, and maybe even the Democrats more than the Republicans in some cases, are sort of keeping an open mind about uh, what they're going to get out of the governor. One of the reasons that I think the Democrats have an open mind is they have an interesting situation right now that they haven't had in years. Everything that happens in Jeff City is the Republicans' fault. They own the Senate, they own the House, they own the governorship. And so no matter what happens, whether it's good or bad or whatever, it's, it's going to be tied to the Republicans. Sometime in the next couple of days or a couple of weeks, Governor Greitens, through no fault of his own, is going to have to cut hundreds of millions of dollars from the budget. And he's gonna cut them from the Parkway schools and the Rockwood schools and the city of St. Louis and rural districts all over because he's gonna have no choice. And he's gonna cut health care from old people or disabled people. And he's gonna cut money that, that senators and representatives are expecting to come to their districts. That's gonna be one of the first things he has to do because the budget that the previous Republican legislature and Democratic governor passed and or administered is out of balance. And so everything changes once you all of a sudden have to take money out of the budget that people are expecting to come their way. And then all of a sudden, doesn't matter that you're a Republican, doesn't matter that you like guns, doesn't matter what your positions were, you're the guy who stopped us from getting that money. Last question, we'll move on. But are we gonna get a president out of him? I already heard that on Inauguration Day too from some people. Oh, he's gonna run for president. He has aspirations, that's yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. The, the question is when. He, so, he's going to run for president. The question is, does he wait four years? Does he wait eight years? Does he, does he start running today? He's going to run for president. So, Casey, you know, quickly, I just wanted to mention that, you know, the reaction that you said people had to his speech and places where people should have applauded, there was no applause. I think right now people just don't know what they don't know. And so they're just observing and looking. And once he starts making those budgetary decision cuts, then we'll, we'll start to see different, you know, factions, so to speak, um, that we'll are know rallying. Know his priorities, I yes, guess. Yes, know his priorities in ways that people can be reactive to. So right now it's just a, a wait and see.